It is episode 7, and there is no time to lose. Remember that guy from Pompeii who immortalized himself by having a death wank when Vesuvius blew its load? Well, it didn't happen here. By the power of diversity quotas, the stunning and brave Galadriel survived becoming Roast Galadriel and is now a Cheeto because of pyroclastic plot armor or something like that. What is she doing? Standing and oh, a horse is on fire. Wait, did a bull cut survive because he's somehow important to the plot? Why yes he did. Oh, the horror. A sealed door is dead and it can never come back, ever, into a later episode. Quick, this transition to the very important, definitely not Hobbes' Harfords, and look, currently recovering from a heroin addiction hobo Gandalf is pulling a cart. What's this? A big rock. Fear not, as totally no longer funny Lenny Henry tells them that the rock is there because evil is rising. What a stunningly accurate statement from someone who has yet to have any connection to the other characters. Stop. Hobo Gandalf is talking to a tree, and it's alive again, because that works somehow. But oh no, a branch falls off to set up a dramatic save sequence. Poor recovering Hobo Gandalf, he just tried to do the right thing, and they all hate him more. I hope they don't tell him to fuck off, and totally need him later. Let's leave that scene so it doesn't get resolved. We're off to see the dwarves. Is Durin still asking Hairspray Elrond to slip him some raw meat behind Deez's back? No, because there are others in the room and this is a PG-13. What is Elrond doing? He is telling the King of the Midgets not to trust the elves, but please save them because they are totally powered by Mithril. That's they conveniently only discovered a couple of episodes ago. Hmm, looks like the King Midget says no, but don't worry, he'll come around eventually because we already know the elves have survived. Hey look, it's Deezer. Has she mentioned anything about her immutable characteristics yet? No, she's actually being quite good in this show. Maybe she should have led with that in all those interviews. Ah, a touching moment. Hairspray says goodbye to Bud Buddy Durin, but look, just by being near Mithril, the leaf no longer has demon gist on it. Because, well, just because. Back to Cheeto time, and all those orcs also survived a pyroclastic flow. What's that? Bold card kid wants to fight the orcs, but stunningly brave Galadriel tells him it's over. Well, it's just like the first episode all over again. Wait, are they walking without masks? Don't they realize there's a big dangerous volcano out there with a 99.9% .9 survival rate? Well, even the really smart and really funny Yes Queen has survived, because we can't seem to kill off any character who has a name. But she's blind now, because, well, just because. Let's go live to stunning and brave Galadriel. Oh look, she's still going on about how she's the absolute best at everything. Here you go, untrained bowl cut kid, have a sword. Next scene, and this horse is absolutely fine, and totally hasn't been set on fire, because the radiant glow of diversity and inclusion also includes some horses, you bigot. Rewind. We're now going back to stunningly and no longer a cheeto and definitely not a roasted chicken plot armor Galadriel. Bowl cut kid is still alive, and touchingly asks Stunningly Brave if she has ever lost anyone. And well, she totally lost Celeborn, because the writers are using Tolkien as a skin suit. Was removing Celeborn from the story meant to give her agency as a really strong and really funny warrior? What do you think this is, a 1950s housewife? Of course she has agency. And hey, Bulkart Kid thinks Mount Doom was all his fault, and it probably was. Stop, be very quiet. Orcs are about and are searching because the plot needs them to be. Hey look, it's just like that scene from the first film. Do you remember that? Do you remember? I remember when they hid underneath the tree. Watch out, Joran's got a hard on because he's all alone with Hairspray Elrond and is pounding those wall cheeks. Do you think their romance will ever be revealed? Do you think that Joran will Philip Schofield Deezer and then cry on national TV and destroy his family? We can only hope so. Wow. Look at all that Mithril. I bet there's a bell rock down there, but oh no! The king just happens to find them and he's not pleased. And look, Hairspray Elrond no longer has Hairspray because he's been told to get the fuck out of Dodge. Back to definitely not Hobbes' Hartford and well, everyone's really stunningly happy because Hobo Gandalf saved them with apples. It was a shame totally no longer funny Lenny Henry told the only protection they have to fuck off. Stop. Someone called Dr. Dre because Ticka Ticka Slim Shady with tits and her merry band of girl power are on the hunt for Hobo Gandalf. I hope they don't find the Hobbises. Oh, they do because fake Frodo totally broke cover. Look, she put out that fire. 
She would have been really useful at that volcano. But oh no! Tika Tika Slim Shady with tits is totally evil and burns the Hobbits' carts. How will they get out this predicament? How will they survive? And how will the audience ever give a shit about them? Look, a sealed doors dad is talking to a disobedient horse, but it's not listening because the horse has seen too much shit. Better let it go rather than eat it, because it's not like you have an entire army to feed. And now a sealed doors dad regrets ever deus ex machining the stunning and brave Galadriel. So do we. She should have drowned because the sea is always right. These people look suspiciously injured by the volcano. If they had adjusted in front of the pyroclastic flow, they would have been fine. But oh no, Bullcut thinks his mum is dead. But jokes on him, her mum had plot armour. Emotional reunion, fuck no, no one even likes these characters. Hmm. Knockoff Legolas is hugging Bullcut like he's his dad. And Go Go Gadget Galadriel ruins their special moment. Back to the Blind Queen. And she has to put up with a very angry looking, stunning and brave. Maybe the Yes Queen can say something really smart and really funny, but she doesn't. And Galadriel takes full responsibility for everything. Even though in episode 3, Galadriel asked to go home and the Queen refused it, and also the Queen sent her entire army to Middle Earth. Shut the front door! Is the Yes Queen now declaring war on the cishet Republican orcs? Of course she does. And oh no! How will they do it with just 300 minus properly 5 numero normies quite easily because of the plot armour? And a Seals Doors dad fucks off and cries. Hey, the totally not Hobbes' halfers are trying to rebuild. And Nori's dad wants to get a move on, but totally no longer funny Lenny Henry tells him they need to give the Hobbes' time to grieve. Do you remember that scene from the first film when Boromir tells Aragorn to give the younglings time to grieve Gandalf? Oh look, he's giving an emotional speech. And says their hearts are as big as their feet because we need to be continuously reminded that they are little fat hobbitses. But where's Tika Tika Slim Shady with tits? No one knows. She just totally burnt their stuff down and left without killing one of them. Now Nori wants to find Hobo Gandalf herself. But would you believe it? We form the Fellowship of Retarded Females with totally no longer funny Lenny Henry at the helm. Transition time, and the Numero Normaries are going home to return at a later date. Hey, the two diversity elves are talking and half-pint florist commander gate crashes. To tell Galadriel, her definitely not Sauron Halbrand boyfriend is totally alive because we can't kill off Sauron now, can we? He's in the films, remember? Wait, he needs elvish medicine? Do you remember that time when Frodo was on a horse to get elvish medicine? Don't worry, he looks really injured but can totally walk fine. He's also a king now. I wonder... When he meets the elves, does he use their forge to make totally not suspicious rings? Oh well, Bullcut is also now a soldier because Go Go Gadget Galadriel said so. Stop. It is coming. There is something moving deep below the mines of Khazad Doom. It's a Belrog, of course. Do you remember that time in The Lord of the Rings when Gandalf totally fought the Belrog? I remember. Oh, I remember. Subscribe button. Is always right.